Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this uh, retrospective study that we have conducted at St. Thomas Hospital about uh, transvaginal rectus ear repair as a surgical option to, to fix uh, symptomatic rectus ear refractory to medical treatment. No dispute. Rectus ear. Rectus ear results from a weakness in the rectovaginal septum, which can cause an herniation on the anterior rectal wall into the posterior wall of the vagina. Rectus ear can be incidental finding, and in this case, they can be asymptomatic, and they can be found during routine pelvic floor investigation. Or otherwise, they can cause symptoms such as obstructive defecation syndromes. Usually, rectus ear less than 2 cm are accepted as normal. Treatment of symptomatic rectus ear. We have two different kinds of treatment. Conservative management, which is considered the first line of treatment for rectus ear causing obstructive defecation syndrome. The, the aim is to improve rectus ear empty, and this includes a technique to improve rectus ear empty, like, such as uh, use of suppositories and or irrigation, or also uh, change in defecatory technique. Need an active cooperation between a patient and carer. Surgical repair is a reserve for patients that they didn't achieve a satisfactory improvement with conservative management, Usually, it comes after a multidisciplinary team discussion, which is crucial to decide which patient might benefit or not from this treatment. And dif different surgical options have been described in the literature with the transvaginal approach, transperineal approach, and transanal approach, but uh, non randomized control, control trials have, have been proposed, and uh, so there is not a definitive consensus about which is the most effective approach. Transvaginal rectus ear repair is used in our trust for rectus ear refractory to ex extensive conservative treatment, and the approach that we do is a native tissue transvaginal rectus ear repair performed by a colorectal surgeon with a specific interest in pelvic floor disorders. The criteria for surgical repair are like that the rectus ear they should be um, proct proctographically functional, so usually they should be over 3 cm, possibly trapping, so there should be trap of material inside the rectus ear. Uh, the symptom relief with vagina or perineal digitation, but not with uh, anal digitation. And patients shouldn't have uh, other concomitant causes for obstructive defecation syndrome, such as a high grade into susception, for example. And usually the patient, they should get a normal colonic transit. In this picture, we can see that uh, Usually what we do is like a T inverse incision with a full mobilization of the rectus ear from the posterior wall of the vagina and the levatoplasty is done as well. Transvaginal rectus ear repair. In our study, what we did is like a retrospective study and in, we included the patient from 2006 and 2018. All patients, they had the pelvic floor investigation, including anorectal manometry, rectal balloon sensation, endoinal ultrasound and evacuation proctography. Majority of patients, they had the, um, conservative management done in our institution. Some of them, they had the conservative management in another center before the referral. 236 patients had the transvaginal rectus ear repair in our institution. Data were not available for 21, and so 2,215 patients were included in the analysis. These are the characteristics of the patient. 55 years uh, median age, uh, 206 patients had previous vaginal delivery, 40% of patients had previous hysterectomy, 28.4% had previous pelvic floor surgery, and other patients they had proctological procedure. Patient symptoms. Uh, two most frequent symptoms are ODS, which is present in 97.2%, uh, and uh, the other main symptom is like a vaginal prolapse or bulge, which is present in 81.4%. Other kind of symptoms are a, a combination between anal incontinence, fecal urgency, patient that they present with vaginal splinting, anal digitation, constipation, dyspareunia, and urinary symptom. So, so most of the patients, they had a combination of at least two or most, more of them. Conservative treatment. So in our institution, 86.5% underwent pre-op conservative treatment. The rest of these patients, they didn't get the conservative treatment in our institution, but they had the conservative treatment in local hospital and they have been referred because after conservative treatment, they didn't achieve satisfactory improvement. The mean session is 2.7 and the different strategies. 
between from the user suppositories and the laxatives, transanal irrigation, some loperamide or procainic. Surgical procedure, 98.1% had the levatoplasia at the time of the rectocy repair, 19.5% had the renterosy repair, and 27.4, so one in four patients, had a combined procedure with the urogynecology to fix a middle compartment prolapse or to fix a urinary sink. Post-operative complication. In hospital complications were recorded only in 24 patients. The, 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 most, the most present complication was urinary retention. The second one was ileus or urinary tract infection. Follow-up complications were included in urinary retention, vaginal infection, and rectovaginal fistula. Long-term complications included, for example, development of chronic pelvic pain, dyspareunia, and the need for other pelvic floor surgery. Patient perspective, so the mean length of follow-up was 12 months, so nearly over a year. Global improvement was recorded in 87.9%. Only 8.4% found that the procedure didn't improve the symptoms. 67% of the patients agreed to continue conservative management after the surgery with a mean of 2.8 sessions. And if we think about that, most of these patients, they had a 2.7 session before, this is a approximately like a sandwich treatment. 29.3% did feel the need for further investigation. The change of patient symptoms. We, can, we have recorded the same symptoms before and after the procedure. For example, in terms of ODS, we can see that 58.6% of patients improved the ODS symptoms. 80% 80, 80 of patients improve the symptoms of vaginal bulge. The, the patient with the dyspareunia is the same percentage before and after because we have 14% of patients with dyspareunia before, 6.5% improve the dyspareunia, and 6.5% develop a new dyspareunia. Interpretation of the results. So we have a good satisfactory improvement, and 87.9% of patients reported a global improvement. Uh, there, there might be a potential strategy, this, uh, the, the fact that we use a conservative treatment before and after, this might be a good strategy, for example, to reduce the recurrence rate in the future. The absolute rate of dyspareunia is the same because sometimes dyspareunia preoperative pre can be caused by the fact that there is a laxity of the tissue which is caused by the rectocere. In conclusion, in we have demonstrated that the transvaginal rectocele repair is an effective procedure in patients with significant rectocele leading to difficult defecation, refractory to conservative treatment. It is a safe treatment with a very low percentage of complication, and the addition of levatorplasty doesn't lead to an acceptable rate of dyspareunia. Thank you.